Sorry, it's case ID 4469001. Good afternoon. Shelley Lubitz for people at 10 on behalf of Timothy Fondell, who's present. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Leslie Cohen, Brenner Rooks at 6053. The court has received and reviewed a report from Dr. Mortadella dated September 8, 2001. Um, I guess I should digress a little bit. Did you guys talked and reached any agreements as a result of this report? I asked uh, counsel. She indicated she wanted to be able to address the court. So I actually wanted to hear what you had to say and your thoughts, frankly. I mean, we did just get the reports recently, and what we had them for several years. You want to know what my prospective intent would be would be probably to incorporate what Dr. Mortallero recommended on an interim basis, send them to mediation, see if they can formulate their own, and then be back in 60 days. Um, I prefer, like he, uh, given this child's age, it is inconvenient for parents, but as far as bonding purposes, the two days, two days is what's recommended. My, I guess our concern as far as setting up the schedule is Dr. Mortimero actually recommended that the parenting coordinator assist the parties. I think the conflict level may be so high that they may need to go beyond mediation and actually start with the parenting coordinator's back. Well, I'd, I'd actually flag that in mind and as you, I don't know, then in my case the parenting coordinator, they can be costly. Absolutely. That's my only concern. I'd actually, with a big check mark, marks off uh, that they should do the cooperative parenting course at UNLV, which is only 299 but to just assign a parenting coordinator out of the gun is going to be very costly for them, and I prefer to see if they can work on their own for a period of time. Be very can't they haven't reached my level where I say I can't manage this anymore, and another parenting coordinator did that. And I have full confidence that the interview specialist and mediation specialist downstairs will be able to facilitate. I mean, that's why they're there. And, and it's less expensive. And uh, again, I don't, it's the same reason I don't like exchanges to happen at a police station because people just start to infer that, gee, there must be something wrong, there must be violence, whatever. I, I don't know why these folks, any questions that mom had about dad have been resolved by Dr. Mortallero. So my thought is they need to go to cooperative parenting they need to take the boot in the backside that Dr. Moore-Valero gave them. Let's grow up and, and co-parent your kid. If not, we're going to have a situation where if we have to go and ask somebody else how to raise our kids and how to involve them, you know, involve some a third party in problem solving, then we may have to come in at another point and say, "Gee, primary has to go to one parent because there's so little uh, co, you know, communication going on in co-parenting." So my thought is we send them to the the UNLV course. We send them downstairs. We do the two days on, two days off. If we can resolve something else, great. Uh, if not, I, I just, uh, my concern is, you know, I'm into this case a lot uh, financially. Uh, my client's only paid me $2,100. Mom may have unlimited resources. My client doesn't. Um, so the more that we can narrow this down and focus this, to me, the better off we're all going to be. You know, I have, my entire case is filled with this case. I have three email files just on emails, and I, I just see this thing spinning out of control, and I don't think it needs to be, and the more people we have involved, the more cooks we have in the kitchen, obviously, the more difficult it's going to be. They need to learn to co-parent. Well, usually we go this, this route to sure. send them out for a custody evaluation. We started this case on the pinnacle. We now know what an outsourced recommendation is, right. and now we're probably going to start going downhill because I don't want to go the other route. I hope so, but my concern is, is that from my client's standpoint, she's been trying to co-parent with dad all along, and he's been resistant. Even we'll if see, it's because right now he hasn't had two days alone, right? No, but even if it's something as simple as, and remember, we're talking about a very small child. I understand. So she's having, for instance, digestive issues, and mom tries to say, what have you been feeding? Not what have you been feeding, but what are you feeding? I think she, there may be an allergy. She gets nothing from dad. I don't have to tell you what she's eating. That's oh, not no, co-parenting when you're talking about I'm not, and I'm not getting into the, the microwave. That's if why your client wants to, to provide, I'm sure, Ms. Lubitsch, your client would have no problem if mom provided the food for the child for the two days that he has oh, a child, right? Judge, asking, judge, it's point. completely it's inaccurate, and I have the emails right here. I'm not getting, again, if you wanted to. It's ridiculous. Dad, dad feeds this child better than mom does, okay? I co-parenting. Listen, 
it's going to be the two days. If you're trying to argue no, why I'm it's not, not going to be. No, I'm trying to get them in front of a parenting coordinator. Why? Because they're not co-parenting. Let's see if this and course works first. And if it does and not, then I will. And I, and I will make a suggestion, Your Honor. I know that, for instance, Dr. Lankite has taken on a new uh, PhD to learn parenting coordination from him. She happens to be a friend of mine, so I'm not suggesting you use her. And I know Ms. Lubritz is feeling about Dr. Lenkite, but my point Correct. being is there are the big names out there who are taking on associates and people who are perfectly qualified but just haven't been or in family court for 10 years doing parenting coordination. So there are less expensive options for parenting coordinators. So I would just like to make that point. I think it's worth us looking into. If the class doesn't work, if, if mediation doesn't work, doesn't work right. we can find someone. I, I, you're right. If, I, if we get to that point, we get the, we can't cross those two hurdles, you're right. I would consider it at that point. Right. Okay. But in the interim, I would hope just by him having the two days swapping back and forth that that might alleviate the asking that's going on. Thank we'll you. We'll see. We'll see. Um, additionally, Your Honor, just to make a point, you specifically sent us to Dr. Johnson because he was supposed to be less expensive for doing an evaluation. And just for the record, he was supposed to be 2500 is what you had mentioned. Dr. Uh, Mortallero charged 6000 So it was kind of, you know, my client got there, was ready to meet with Dr. Johnson, was told, no, no, you have to meet with Mortallero. So it might be something that you might want to look into, and we're certainly asking to have half of that cost reimbursed from your clinic. And just why well, wouldn't they the, have the it up? Well, the protocol probably would have been for you to contact us, and we would have probably reassigned it, but that's... You know, who no else were we going to go? Even. Who else were we going to go to who was less expensive than Mortallero? I mean, to get a PhD There's level, a lot of people out there. Johnson's the only you know person who isn't doing them for twenty five hundred. We didn't think it was going to be six thousand either. You're asking right now for me to reimburse it? Not right now. I mean, in the end, after we take that those into consideration for final orders on it, it's it's unfortunate it went that way. But again, I don't know. You're kind of saying one thing and saying the other. You, we probably wouldn't have found anybody else at a PhD level anyway. Right, but part of the reason we did the evaluation was specifically the reason we did it with Dr. Johnson was because of his reasonable expenses. Okay. I don't know. Is Dr. Johnson no longer available? Is that the your question? He wasn't available. He was, I mean, she, my client went and saying I'm supposed to meet with Dr. Johnson was told, no, you're meeting with Mortimero. Then why not contact the court or me right. and ask, hey, is there someone else we can use? Mortalero wants six thousand dollars. Well, well this is the first time hearing before. of their complaint. I was a drop the final order, but I mean we'll note that for the record. We'll consider that in the future. But um, go ahead and refer them to FMC. You guys have the referral for the UNLV Cooperative Parenting Thank Course. You. Thank you. There are classes starting in early October. Send them to mediation. Hopefully they can start the mediation process even before the class starts. But Classes do not start until the third week of October, so. Do you want them to attend together or separately, Judge? They recommend, uh, perfect, when we went to class, recommended they attend them separately. Perfect, thank you. Am I gonna have to get on into specifics regarding exchange places? It's gonna be, again, I can't do the, it's simply gonna be every two days there needs to be an exchange. They're exchanging right now, I think, at 8 o'clock, receiving parent picks up yep. and uh, at each other's homes. And uh, I would ask that we just continue that order. Um, we continue the order that allows for recording. Both are, both are recording one another at the exchanges. Okay. No problem with that. Um, the one issue that I do have, and if you want me to save it a little bit later, I can. Um, 
we, last time we were here, the court indicated very clearly that Mr. Feindel's daughter from a different relationship is not a party to this action, and there's nothing involved with her in this case. Um, on 8-3, I asked counsel to have her client cease sending emails, asking to see Emily, how she's doing, et cetera, because it's upsetting to my client. Uh, Ms. Um, uh, Cohen felt that there was nothing wrong with it or harassing about it. I can tell you that just in my file, in this one file, there have been eight emails since I asked them to stop on 8-3. Um, there were another three or four that I've gotten recently. I mean, I'll note it for the record, but same thing, I can't do anything about it. Well, Unless it's... Unless get a restraining order against her from doing it. I, and, and, I, and I told her that I would do that if they continued. Right. Um, so would the court... Um, can we have an understanding? Would I file a restraining order with the court to request the application? Do you want me to file it in... It would have to be with the... Okay, or can we have an understanding that that will cease so that we don't have to spend more time, money, and effort? This is a child that she's helped raise for the last few years. Man, I'll re that we she called a liability. Yeah. Yeah. preference. I don't have jurisdiction either way. I don't have jurisdiction. But we can stipulate here. to it. My question is, do I need to spend more money filing? A well, restraining order? actually, I don't know that you need to file any. Your client by himself can go ahead and file a restraining order, come down, and if okay, you want so we don't have a stipulation. You to show up for the hearing. Okay. We don't have a stipulation on that. Um, okay. Your Honor, if I can just address, the exchanges in the morning are fine. My client's supposed to be at work at 8, so if we could do the exchanges maybe at 7.30 so she doesn't have to worry about rushing to work. Mm -hmm. um, That's probably fine, better. Right, okay, better. and then since the way this, the two days in a row is fine, except ultimately I know both parties want to have full weekends, so are we going to agree that if they come up with an agreement in mediation, they can start the agreement and mediation immediately and not wait to come back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Additionally, Your Honor, um, we've just had concerns about the plaintiff's lack of a job search. He's done some job search, but he hasn't been looking, has not provided evidence that he's done five searches per week for your order. Well, uh, that's incorrect. We've submitted copies of them. It's not five per week, and it's some, it some averages one of five the jobs per week. is like, is like a, a one-time deal job for $250 an hour. We want to see him looking for, he's, he's just look. Well, also, we don't know that it's a job search. He's provided ads. He hasn't provided no, screenshots of his applications or anything that's like that. Sometimes all he can do. He can provide a screenshot of his email back saying, I'm interested in this job. Here's a copy of my resume so that we know he's actually gone after To the job. extent that he can do that, we will do you so. You have every right in discovery to, to contact his employers and see that. I understand that. But that's and all we provided them with copies right. of all of the uh, screenshots. You're to, sir, you understand you continue to do that. Yeah. You need to keep looking. I think we did Correct. 35 Correct. so far. Uh, the one concern is when I, there's a follow-on <laughs> contact saying I'm an attorney and I'm asking about this guy, it does kind of tank what I'm doing with those people. It, it is well, a all they should be a, confirming is that you submitted an application. That's the only thing you have the right to Okay. We, Fair enough. I, just, I think she identifies herself when she calls, and it does make it, it – it's a concern. All right. And, well, if he provides us the screenshot or a copy of his email to them, that's fine. Um, our that? other concern is that he's not looking that, for all the jobs he could. He keeps looking for these jobs in the computer field that he may or may not be qualified for. We'll determine that. It's a horrible economy out there. Oh. Right, which is why he could go be a bartender, because he's clearly not finding work as a small business owner. He's got experience as a bartender. Let him go. All I can do right now for today's purposes is admonish him he needs to continue to do that. If you end up setting it on trial, it's based on that. We'll set it on trial. So the court knows we've submitted 35 so far. Okay. Um, and, and I will go ahead and uh, ask my client to the extent that he can do a screenshot of the actual application, then we will do that. Or his email. There, there's going to come a point where you may have to, for a period of time, take a minimum wage job, which is better than nothing. Absolutely agreed. In, I have. I also included invoices that I have made money on in the interim. Yes. Uh, they blocked out all the information. A week so work happening. Back. Something will pop. But right. it, indeed, I could. I could do the minimum wage thing. Sure, but that wouldn't be good for the kids over the long term. If I remain as a computer guy, I can continue to have a nice house and take good care of them. In the meantime, we're not destitute. And we're, he owns his own home. He pays his mortgage. He feeds the kids. If it gets to that point, I'll make yeah. that decision. <laughs> Um, now, with regard to our request last time and in our underlying motion for assistance with fees, um, the court indicated that you would address it today. Um, I don't know what... I said I deferred it, and I'm probably going to defer it. I don't know your client's real true... First of all, this is a, a, a marriage that's barely two years, correct? 
Absolutely, but I'm not asking for support. I'm asking for fees, and under Sergeant, we're entitled to it. She makes fifty-two thousand dollars a year, as you know. Nowhere near a Sergeant case. A Sergeant case is a twenty-nine-year relationship where the man had three million dollars and she had forty thousand. I understand, but I but I do believe under the statutes and under Sergeant, when we have a disparity in income, my client right now has paid me twenty-one hundred dollars. A lot of that has gone to costs. Uh, I bill at four hundred an hour. I'm into this case over twenty thousand dollars. Um, mom has been, as the court noted last time, mom's been the breadwinner throughout the marriage while dad has stayed at home. You're married, though. I understand that, but she's in, but she's paying her lawyer fees. Well, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not. The best I can do right now is I'll, I'll defer it again. I mean, I won't outright deny it, but okay. this is not truly a case where I'm anticipating awarding either of them unless I set up an evidentiary hearing and something is clearly. So respectfully, so he's not entitled to be on equal footing um, in the litigation of this matter? Under Sergeant? Yes. It's not a Sergeant. How about case. under? Under Sergeant is very fact specific. Okay. Wright versus Osborne brings up a disparity of income, but the allegation is being selectively underemployed. Respe I don't know that, so I see it. Respectfully, we've also indicated, um, we also cited in our underlying motion the statutes which provide for temporary fees and allowances. So even if you don't like it under Sergeant, under the statutes, we're entitled to very discretionary. Understood, but can we find out how much mom has paid her lawyer at this point? It's kind of funny, and she's had two I lawyers. asked for that information in my discovery, and, and I, I asked provided for information it. about work he was doing for her. He's not doing and work for me. I he did it with his first case for her. My client, my client answered things truthfully. Hey, you want to both disclose, she's disclosed what she wants from her. Sure, you disclose what you want. It's not going to change what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so we won't have any award of fees at this point. I will defer it yet again. Very well. Thanks. Anything else till we uh, get back? Uh, trial date. We'll see if mediation works out first. I'll get if we get to a point where they can agree. I'll get you a trial within, assuming you have your sixteen point two disclosures in order. Thank you. I'll get your trial date within thirty days. Okay. Good. But let's see where we're at upon the return. Very well. Thank you. And the return is December seventh and. Because my clients had no overnight since your last hearing, the child's with him now. Uh, can we start the two days on, two days off today? Let's hope. Super. Start the two days you got to understand, with a seven-day week, with a two, everybody's going to get their fair share of different right. days during the week. So the answer to that would be yes. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate All right. it. I'll prepare for today. I'm sorry. Um, is child support going to be addressed as well? Because we have a shared physical custody arrangement, and uh, child support should be awarded. On the return, I'm still not convinced that your client. I realize he's not working right now, but right. I don't know that he doesn't have the ability to work. I can also consider him that average wage if I deem that the case. So for right now, there's still not going to be any award. Okay, just so you know, even even under Nevada average wage, because she makes fifty-two thousand, there'll still be an exchange of some support. Um, but I would just ask that my request be retroactive when you make your final decision. Be right. As of today, today as of today, she doesn't make 50. just for today, yeah. this day forward, we're having temporary joint physical custody. We'll note that if there is an award, it would be retroactive for today. Appreciate it. Thank you for the court's indulgence. Have a good day. All right. I'll butcher this name. I apologize. Page 13, Rajshank Kaliski. 